to introduce Tino, who will uh, introduce to us the Open Nebula Cloud Platform for data center virtualization, and yes, we'll answer questions at the end of the presentation. Tino. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming to the um, OSDC and to this um, talk in particular. Um, I'm going to talk about Open Nebula, and um, I want to give also uh, some introductory demo to the uh, software. Uh, if you have any questions at any time, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, um, I just don't want to bore you to death, so if you think that the conference is going to some place that is just not interesting, just let me know and we'll change it, no problem. Okay, so these are the tentative contents of the, of the talk today. I'm going to do a brief introduction on the Open Nebula project, and then I'll start to um, describe the Open Nebula software. I will give uh, a demo uh, using Sandstone, which is the web interface to Open Nebula. And then we'll talk a bit about the key features and the architecture. And then I'll finalize with uh, some uh, information on who is using Open Nebula and uh, what can you do to try it out. OK, so uh, the Open Nebula project started in 2005 or some, some time before that um, in a research group in a university in Madrid, Spain. Um, it started as a research project, and uh, in 2008, uh, we delivered the first technology preview uh, with the aim of um, develop and innovate in the field of cloud computing. Um, from that, we, had, uh, we have uh, various versions of the software uh, until um, the upcoming 4.0 that it's going to be um, in this stable uh, release in probably a couple of weeks. Uh, somewhere around um, 2010, a company, a spin-off of the research group called C12G Labs, started to give professional services um, around Open Nebula. So in case uh, anyone is interested in doing a professional deployment in, um, in any company, um, I want you to know that there's a company that can give you support and also um, consultancy for Open Nebula Clouds. Okay, so this is uh, some data on the, on the project and the, uh, the software as well. So <clears throat> you can see the uh, nice graphics <laughs> uh, saying that, well, the community is uh, healthy and um, the interest in the Open Nebula is just growing and starting to grow fast. Um, so for instance, you can see that um, there's uh, over 1,000 registered users in the mailing list. Uh, there's a, a great deal of uh, visits to the uh, uh, web page, and also a lot of uh, downloads. Um, and we just count the downloads from, from our web page, and we don't count the, um, because we cannot, uh, the downloads from uh, the Linux distributions that have uh, Open Nebula packages like CentOS, Ubuntu, Debian, and SUSE. So what is Open Nebula? Open Nebula is basically a cloud <coughs> management platform. So it builds a virtualization layer on top of your uh, physical infrastructure and helps to build you private clouds, uh, virtualizing the resources you have in your data center. Um, so it basically helps you manage the, um, the physical uh, servers, the, um, the networking layer, and also the storage service. So it's an orchestrator of um, mainly three of those uh, three, of, three resources, storage, networking, and um, computing uh, power in the form of uh, hypervisors. Um, it also has uh, components to help you build hybrid clouds. Uh, so you can extend the power of your local infrastructure with public cloud providers like Amazon EC2. And uh, it also helps you to, to build public, public clouds for external consume if you are interested um, using um, pub public cloud APIs like, for instance, Amazon EC2 or also OCCI, which is the OGF recommendation for cloud computing interface. And at the end of the day, what it does is it enables service virtualization. So it helps you um, virtualize your servers and manage them. And 
um, it also um, helps you um, manage the elasticity of the services and basically uh, allows you to have a multi-tenancy in your physical uh, infrastructure to keep services to different um, groups or, or people um, in a way um, abstracting the, the details of your infrastructure and just giving um, computing power to, to users through a simple interface. So these are the three types of um, clouds that um, Open Nebula can build. So public cloud, it just basically it's um, um, a private cloud with a simple web interface that gives uh, infrastructure resources in a elastic and and this is an illusion infinite uh, manner. So the end user doesn't care about what's the capacity of the cloud he's using. He just launches virtual machines and Open Nebula manages the infrastructure so uh, the resources are um, used in an optimized way. If you don't care about the public uh, cloud interface, you can build a private cloud, which is just basically a cloud behind a firewall. So it's just um, uh, made for internal consume. And uh, the aim of uh, having a cloud in your infrastructure, uh, the, um, the ultimate goal is to improve operations and to improve the utilization of your hardware. Um, additionally, as I said before, you can build a hybrid cloud, which basically supplements the capacity of your private cloud by outsourcing some of the virtual machines to a public cloud provider in case there's a peak demand and the infrastructure is saturated. So talking about uh, the components that uh, Open Nebula manages, um, as you see on top of Open Nebula, there's uh, different interfaces and tools to help you interact with the, with the cloud. Um, there's a command line interface that is um, uh, designed with uh, the Unix philosophy if you want, if you want to behind. So it's a simple <laughs> command for simple tasks. And you also have a, a web interface, uh, it's a sandstone, that allows you a bit more of, um, how do you say, a bit more of um, wizardry on top of Open Nebula. So it helps you use Open Nebula without having to go into a low level of detail like the command line interface uh, needs. <coughs> it also supports different APIs, there's the native XML RPC API and also uh, some uh, Ruby bindings on top that are easier to use. Uh, we'll, we'll see afterwards a, a simple example of how you can write a Ruby script <coughs> to help you manage your, your virtual machines. There's also the EC2 and OCCI public cloud interfaces. And um, there's uh, other components like the Open Nebula apps that uh, gives you the ability to do service management and also uh, image uh, catalog uh, distribution ac across different Open Nebula instances. Um, other components that um, Open Nebula can manage are the, the network, so it can help you be, build VLANs uh, across your uh, virtual machines. Ah. <laughs> um, can also, uh, it also gives you the ability to do uh, firewalling rules on your virtual machines and uh, it supports multiple backends, so it's integrated with uh, Open B Switch. Uh, it can use uh, 802.q1 um, protocols. And there's lots of uh, possibilities. This is one of the nicest things of Open Nebula is the modularity and the ability to integrate with different components. And it's also the most difficult thing about it because uh, you have to tailor it to your needs and. At the beginning, it, it, it could be a, a bit uh, frustrating to make it work because uh, there's a whole array of options that you have to cut down uh, for, for your needs. But as, as, as soon as it's uh, set up, then it's really easy to add uh, new components and in integrate with other, with other software. In terms of storage, uh, there's uh, multiple backends supported. Um, with the different protocols for image distribution. 
Um, it also allows you to have multi tenancy and also the authorization um, module it's uh, it's pretty flexible so you can integrate it with um, x509 certificates or LDAP servers or active directory or <clears throat> you can even develop your own authorization module with a simple uh, API to to make open nebula interact with other services like for instance Kerber or something like that uh, it also manages permissions and roles, so it has um, a powerful um, <coughs> access control list mechanism, so you can fine-grained uh, give permissions to users to use just certain um, group of VMs or, or just a particular uh, data store or, or just a couple of virtual networks. That's uh, up to the cloud admin to, to figure out. And it also allows you to um, group hosts in different clusters um, with similar computer characteristics and also network layout. So you can ensure that one VM that um, needs a particular configuration ends up in, in the right hardware. Um, also, there's uh, support for multiple hardware vessels. So out of the box, uh, you have support for Shane, KVM, and VMware ESX. OK, some of the design principles behind Open Nebula, one of them is of course, the openness, so it's an open architecture, open interfaces, um, tend to support uh, as many standards as possible, but if they make sense. Um, of course, it's open code. Uh, it's uh, distributed in an Apache .0 land, 2 .0 license, which is pretty unrestrictive. Um, it's also adaptable, so it has a modular architecture. That means that everything is plugin oriented. So the the core daemon manages just abstractions of hosts and virtual machines, and it sends the uh, command of, say, deploy this virtual machine to a small script that understands how to say that to KVM or Sheng or, or VMware. And that goes for uh, storage and networking and monitoring and pretty much everything inside its plugin oriented. It's uh, very light, the core is it's written in C++ and it's been optimized a lot, so um, the memory footprint is, is pretty low. Um, it has a uh, lot of uh, nice features for data center virtualization that we'll see in a while. So this uh, kind of uh, separates Open Nebula to, from the other um, cloud platforms that are more oriented to um, <clears throat> to build Amazon-like clouds. So Open Nebula is just a tool for data center virtualization more than a tool to, for making public clouds, although it can, it can do them. Uh, it's interoperable and uh, it's, the, the roadmap is not vendor-driven, so there's no vendor locking, or so we like to think. And it's enterprise-ready, meaning that it's being proven in uh, massive uh, large-scale deployments, and we give a uh, single installing and update process and support for various platforms. Um, for the upcoming 4.0 version, uh, for those that you have used the software in the past, this is uh, um, a list uh, of, of the new f features. So Sandstone is uh, being revamped and uh, has this uh, appearance now. Uh, the support for snapshotting, uh, support for um, for network cards uh, hot plugging, f also for um, for uh, saving uh, um, a disk in a VM that it's uh, running. So this has to be handled with care, but there's the possibility to do so. Also, the ability to do vertical scaling, which is uh, basically um, how. Um, making a VM have more CPU and memory. Um, also, there's, um, and this is really nice, action and scheduling, so you can say um, to Open Nebula, please shut down this VM uh, next Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning and, and uh, reboot it at uh, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, there's also have been some uh, clear improvements in the command line interface, although there are not um, they are just useful if you use it uh, every day. You, you'll find out that some improvements. 
And there's a new, new, new drivers for different technologies. The most important one, maybe, it's the Ceph drivers for storage. OK, so now, if it's OK with you, I would like to do a, a brief demo on, on the software. So this is um, this is the uh, web interface of uh, Open Nebula. So I'll just log in. So this is how it looks like. This is a dashboard. As you see, I have uh, nothing in this uh, cloud. Uh, now it's uh, Open Nebula. It's running in my laptop, and it's running using dummy drivers. So the operations are not really real. Uh, but still, I just wanted to show uh, how it looks like, and especially the new interface, which I think is really nice. Um, so basically, this is the dashboard. And this is the administrator view. So um, one admin will be the uh, cloud administrator. And it has access to the system tab, which basically lets him see uh, the different uh, users. Um, he can do uh, stuff like change the group of a user, or delete the user, or create a new one, and so on. Has the access also to the same, um, to, to the group's uh, tab, which is so I should say it's a group of users, so nothing a lot of interesting. This is the ACLs, which these are the default ACLs in Open Nebula, which is basically saying that um, users, for instance, the first one, are allowed to create um, virtual machines and virtual networks and images and templates. So if you delete this ACL, then basically no one can do anything. And you can create specific uh, ACLs for specific groups for instance. OK, then uh, the administrator also has access to the, uh, I'm going to create a user uh, so we can log in as a user afterwards. So administrators also have access to the infrastructure uh, tab which uh, the users won't have access to, or at least not to every single um, possibility here. So here you have the ability to create clusters. So basically, a cluster is a collection of hosts, as you see here, virtual networks, and data stores. So data stores are basically a catalog of images. So you see here, we have, uh, by default, three um, data stores. One is the system data store, which is basically uh, the runtime data store. So all the virtual machines that are running uh, must be uh, copied first to the, um, to the system data store. So Open Nebula does that from uh, other um, image data stores, like, for instance, the default. When you register an image, you register it to the, um, to the default data store, and when you uh, launch a virtual machine that uses this image, Open Nebula will copy it to the system data store and run it from there. Um, there's new uh, types of data store in 4.0, for instance, the files data store, which uh, allows you to register any type of, um, of file, not just uh, virtual machine images. And this is useful to be used in uh, contextualization, which is the mechanism that allows you to pass information to your virtual machines. So basically, for Open Nebula, a virtual machine is just a black box. Uh, it doesn't um, open, so to speak, the virtual machine and put data, data inside. Uh, the only thing that it does is uh, it passes information through a mechanism called contextualization that basically adds a, a read-only uh, device to the virtual machine that can be uh, read on, uh, on the booting process. And, set up different things like the network information and, uh, for instance, user SSH keys and things like that. OK, am I going too fast or no? OK, perfect. Uh, also, the system administrator will be able to create uh, virtual networks. So virtual networks are used to um, communicate different uh, virtual machines. 
um, there's different uh, possibilities here in terms of um, the network model. So you can use, um, yeah, that this one is for, for uh, dynamic VMware uh, networking. Uh, this one is to, to, to use uh, layer two uh, uh, filtration rules, um, also integration with OpenB switch. Well, so when you create a network, let's create one. the software bridge that uh, needs to be present in the hosts. So this is basically a software bridge where the virtual machines will connect and this bridge should be um, connected to a physical network interface so the machine can uh, access the internet or access other virtual machines that are in another host. It's a custom attributes that you can put here, things like, for instance, the gateway, and then this information will be uh, passed on to the virtual machine that uh, has to know how to treat it. So if you put here a gateway, then we will provide also uh, contextualization scripts for the virtual machines that will understand this data and, and, and set up the machine, but you can also write your own um, scripts that will just read the information in the, in the contextualization device and and act uh, upon it. So you can pass information here to set up services or the, um, I don't know, the password of the MySQL database and all that stuff. Uh, this is maybe interesting. There's always um, advanced mode, which basically, uh, this should work, but anyway. Advanced mode is normally just a text area where you can paste your your template. So if you ever used Open Nebula using the um, comma line interface, uh, you know that everything um, needs a template, which is just basically a, a text file uh, describing the resources that you want to create. So Sandstone gives you the ability to to have uh, widgets and, and information. Um, that you need it's all displayed here instead of having to go to the documentation and, and figure it out yourself. Okay, so let's create this network. Um, all the resources have this uh, information tab. So here you can do things like change the name of the network or um, set it to another cluster, uh, manage the permissions. As you see, the permissions here are more or less like Unix permissions, the file system. Uh, so you have the ability to use this network will mean to create a virtual machine that uses uh, IPs from this network. Manage this network will, me will mean to, um, to add uh, information to this network like different con configuration attributes or um, uh, add uh, some IP addresses, something like that. The administration um, Permission would be the ability to, to delete the network, for instance, or change uh, core values like the bridge, things like that. You can also change the ownership and the group of the, um, of the network. And this is the inline editing for the general template uh, mechanism that's available more or less in all Open Nebula resources. So you can set here um, specific information like I was going to do before in the in the creation, so you can say here, okay, the gateway for this network is something like that. And you have the ability to um, to edit this in line. So this might seem not to be a big deal, but um, if you used the previous versions of Open Nebula, you're gonna love this, I'm sure. Okay, another aspect of uh, of the virtual network management is the, is the list management. So for instance, for Open Nebula, a list, it's a pair of uh, an IP and a MAC address. So because Open Nebula cannot force a virtual machine to have a particular IP, uh, what we have is a convention. So uh, what Open Nebula can do is to fix the MAC address of the network interface. So basically uh, what it's doing, the convention is, um, you know, MAC addresses are uh, it's formed by six digits. So the first two are used um, always um, 
with a fixed uh, prefix that is defined it in the Open Nebula configuration file. And the last four digits are translated from X hexadecimal to decimal, and that's the IP address that corresponds to this MAC. So uh, a list in Open Nebula is a pair of IP and MAC address. So I can add to this empty network now uh, a list, saying, OK, I want to use this IP for a virtual machine. As you see, will, it, it did generate. This is the, the default prefix for the MAC addresses, and this is just the translation of that IP in hexadecimal. You can erase it here. You can hold the IP to be used uh, in future um, virtual machines, not that just the first one that asked for it. Anyway, this is the, uh, the host's uh, task. So basically, uh, this allows you to uh, manage your physical servers. So you can create hosts here. So let's create one. Um, okay. uh, let's set it to dummy drivers, because I don't have uh, virtualization capabilities in this Mac. Okay, so this is um, the host that I just created. These are the monitoring uh, attributes. So the monitorization in Open Nebula is done through um, small probes that um, are run uh, remotely through SSH in the hosts. And they um, pick information like, for instance, the host name, the free memory, things like that. You can change that dynamically, but in the next monitorization cycle, it will be overwritten <laughs> unless you add a new parameter like, uh, I don't know, color red. So what can you do with this tags? Well, you can say to your virtual machine, I want, to, uh, I want you to run just in hosts that have color red. And um, is this useful? Well, if you have the need for it, then it is very useful. <laughs> if not, then no. <laughs> OK, that was pretty obvious. Um, uh, another tab that it's, uh, I want to show is the Marketplace tab. So this is basically what it does. It connects to a service uh, provided by C12E. So these are, oh, well, C12E is the company behind Open Nebula. I'll talk a bit about it afterwards. So this is a, a collection of uh, images that are prepared to, run, to be run with, with Open Nebula. So you can click on here, for instance, and import it to your local infrastructure. Okay. So you basically, we'll download the image and put it in the in your data store of choice. Uh, here, I guess I have the default one. So basically, we'll download the image, and so it'll be ready to be used by your by your end users. <coughs> okay. So um, let's switch the view and see but a normal user will uh, see it through Sandstone. So you have here the admin and the user view. OK, so a user will basically see the data store and the virtual networks. And you will have access, of course, to the virtual resources. So you have the ability to create images like this one and to manage its permissions. Also, the ability to upload files and kernels. Kernels are useful for, for shared deployments where you have to, to um, in prior virtualization, specify the kernel you want the virtual machine to be run with. Um, this will be the views of the virtual machines of the user and the operations you can do with it. And these are the virtual machine templates. So let's create one uh, to see how it looks like. So a user, when he wants to create a, a virtual machine, he will be presented with something like this. Have the ability to choose between the capacity, so a name, um, the storage. Just basically, you can set here different disks, and you can uh, choose the image that you want. Or, or you can use a, a volatile disk, which is a disk that will ma be made on the fly on the host where the virtual machine is going to run, and then it's going to be discarded, or, or you can choose to save it afterwards. Uh, you can add a, a list from a particular network. Uh, you have the booting options. Um, also, the ability to, to define a kernel and a RAM disk if you are running Sheng. 
some uh, input output um, interfaces, like for instance, if you want to access your virtual machine through BNC. And uh, the context, uh, which is, yeah, information that you can pass to the, um, to your virtual machine. I'm gonna remove this if it lets me. No, okay, but luck. Um, you can pass custom variables and also custom files to, to it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so once I have my uh, virtual machine template, I can choose to instantiate it. So once I instantiate it, it will become a virtual machine in the pending state. So um, now the scheduler is, is trying to find a place for this virtual machine, attending to its capacity. And uh, so I think that I, di I think I didn't. Okay, I didn't show because I don't have permission. So if I go back to the admin view, a new tab here that is the scheduling tab. So here you can uh, put um, some um, placement constraints on the virtual machine. So you can say, okay, I want this virtual machine to just run in this host or in this particular cluster. And you can choose the policy of, this, uh, of the scheduler. So I want this virtual machine to act in a packing um, uh, policy way, so it will go to the, um, to the host with more virtual machines running, so uh, you can um, consolidate your virtual machines in as a few servers as possible and um, shut them, the other ones down or do some maintenance. There's different policies and there's uh, lots of poly possibilities in the scheduler which basically works as a matchmaking algorithm. You have uh, two different um, requirements that you can set, the, um, the rank, which is here, and the, uh, the placement requirements. So the requirements will be filtering out the hosts that are not um, suitable to run this virtual machine and the rank will make um, a priority list between all the hosts that are suitable and pick the best choice. Um, okay. Um, it's also been a, a, a great deal of um, name changing in the operation, so I think they are less confusing now than they were before. Um, one nice thing that uh, you can do with a virtual machine when it's running is, of course, change uh, the capacity. You can at attach new disks uh, while the machine is running. You can attach new network interfaces while the machine is running as well. You can take snapshots of a particular <coughs> disk. You have some information on the placement. And this is, uh, I think, very nice. You can schedule it actions, like saying, for instance, yeah, shut down this machine uh, tomorrow at uh, one o'clock. So you add the action, and you can say, okay, but bring it back to life um, one hour later than that. Or something. <coughs> mm. Okay, uh, that's, um, I think, uh, an overview of the capabilities of Open Nebula in the, um, using the Samsung interface. Have any question about this or you want to see something else or understand how it works? Okay, I'll carry on then. Okay, as I said uh, before, um, we are going to talk a bit about the key features of Open Nebula. One of them is the ability to handle different storage models. So you have um, multiple uh, heterogeneous backends that can be uh, used simultaneously in the same deployment. So here um, you can see the Open Nebula frontend. It's managing uh, different uh, clusters. 
So uh, these different clusters have um, different data stores, which are basically the image servers. So in this way, you can balance the, um, the, the storage servers, which is, in our experience, one of the most uh, difficult parts at the time of the, uh, designing a cloud, uh, it's always the storage bottleneck. So um, this allows for different configurations, like for instance, the upper cluster can be run in a shared distributed file system model, whereas the, the one uh, below can be run using uh, some uh, block device or of fiber channel exporting of, of loons or, or things like that. So you can have your hardware um, distributed in clusters, like saying here goes the uh, fast VMs or here goes the uh, fast cloning VMs. Or the, uh, there's lots of uh, possibilities that allows you to design your cloud. So again, at the beginning will be a bit frustrating because there's a whole array of options, but uh, I think that uh, there's no one solution that fills all, all, all data centers. So uh, having these um, lots of choices, uh, it's uh, at the end of the day good, but um, to start with, it's, it's a bit difficult. Okay, another uh, um, nice feature of Open Nebula is the ability to, um, to run the uh, Ozone server, which is basically a component that lives on top of, uh, of different instances of Open Nebula and manages them uh, simultaneously. So um, you can have an aggregated view of all your Open Nebula instances. So say you have different data centers around the world, and you can you, you can manage them from a single um, point of entrance. Um, this kind of uh, features make uh, Open Nebula um, uh, at least a suitable candidate to, to think about uh, from other proprietary solutions, like for instance, VMware vCloud, which more or less tries to, um, to, to give the same functionality. For instance, the next, the next one is the ability to create virtual data centers, which is basically the ability to, um, to uh, reduce uh, your, your resources to a subset and give them to the figure of a virtual data center administrator. So this guy will be able to manage uh, just this subset as if he was the, uh, the, the administrator of the whole cloud. So he will have the ability to create uh, new users and the ability to, um, to uh, give permissions to their users to use just certain networks and so on. And um, this, uh, this model is really useful uh, when you want to give uh, multi-tenancy to, to, to your users. So you can have, um, for instance, if you are running a, a virtual cloud lab like uh, Cisco is doing now using Open Nebula, they have the ability to create a specific uh, um, virtual laboratories to different uh, groups of users using this kind of uh, technology, which is really interesting. Okay, these are um, other components that are shipped with uh, Open Nebula. Not at the moment, they are shipped separately, but with the same license in the 4.2 uh, version, they will be all packed together. So um, one of them is the app flow that allows you to uh, manage services. So Open Nebula, out of the box, just manages single uh, VMs. But with app flow, you can create roles, which is for instance, uh, if you have a web service, you can define the role of a template, uh, sorry, of a front end, and you can define the role of, a, for instance, a, the master database, and you give the IDs of different VM templates. So this gives you the ability to, to manage the service uh, as a single entity. So you can shut down all the virtual machines from a, from a service, and uh, in upcoming revisions, uh, you'll be able to manage also the elasticity of the service, giving some rules or some key performance indicators. Okay, another of the Open Nebula apps is the App Stage. It uh, gives you the ability to uh, use um, Chef recipes um, to contextualize your, your virtual machine. So you can, um, using Chef Solo, you can tell uh, Open Nebula, okay, you, I want you to to, to create this virtual machine with a vanilla operating system, um, please run this chef recipe so I can have my WordPress installed, for instance. 
Um, the last uh, Penebula app is the App Market. Um, as I showed you before, the, um, the Marketplace tab that connects to a C12G service, well, this um, gives you the ability to create that uh, in-house. So you have a, a catalog of images that can be shared between different Open Nebula instances across different data centers with different um, administrative domains and different storage models and so on. Um, yeah, another, another nice feature is the ability to uh, create hybrid clouds. Um, and you can create so um, uh, in an automatic way. Well, not, not the creation of the cloud, but the use of the cloud. So you can teach the, the scheduler or, or well, set it up. So um, when there's no space left in the physical infrastructure, in the local infrastructure, it will start sending the virtual machines to Amazon. Um, it won't do all the job. I mean, you, you need to have these virtual machines pre-uploaded in Amazon, but um, you, you can set them up so they connect through a VPN and you can have the illusion of having um, your local cloud to be extended uh, with, with the Amazon EC2 uh, computing power. Okay, so uh, a bit on the architecture of Open Nebula. So uh, as you see, um, this the big rectangle is the Open Nebula core, which is the C++ daemon that it's running uh, all the time, and it communicates with the different um, components in the in the data center through uh, drivers. So you have the monitoring driver that will uh, check from time to time if the host is alive and the virtual machines are, are alive. Uh, you have the virtualization driver, which basically uh, speaks with the uh, hypervisor to do the um, uh, life cycle, the virtual machine life cycle operations, like deploy it or, or take a snapshot of things like that. Um, you have the storage drivers that basically uh, will um, um, transfer the images from the uh, data stores to the end hosts. You have the image drivers, which is uh, the, the drivers that uh, place the image inside the data store. And you have the network drivers that speaks with, um, with the um, open B switch, for instance, and creates VLANs for, for your virtual networks. And there's the authorization driver that basically when a user request uh, comes in, if it's uh, enabled, it will talk with an um, Active Directory, for instance, and authenticate this user. Um, Okay, so this is, uh, uh, we just talked about Open Nebula and the drivers that speak with the, uh, with the um, lower layers of the cloud. Uh, on top of, uh, of the core, you have an XML RPC API, which is used uh, to communicate to, with the core and, and, and make uh, requests about uh, resource management. Uh, the scheduler uses this uh, API to, to do the placement, so it will, uh, from time to time, ask for the pending virtual machines and the state of the hosts, and it will decide where uh, which virtual machine goes. Um, on top of this API, you have the uh, Open Nebula Cloud API that comes with two bindings. There's more, but we just support these two, uh, the Ruby and Java bindings. So you can create easily Ruby scripts or Java, uh, not that easily, Java scripts, uh, well, not Java scripts, but Java programs that um, automate uh, certain tasks. And on top of that, you have the command line interface and the web interface, in this case, uh, Sandstone, and the cloud service that gives you uh, the OCCI and the Amazon EC2 um, interfaces. Um, this is just a slide to, um, to convey the idea that it's really easy to, or well, it's, it's doable to develop new drivers. So each, each of, the, of the operations, like for instance, um, um, create this virtual machine is just a small script that receives uh, um, a couple of parameters or, or a, a, a long base 64 blob uh, with uh, different bits of information and creates just a single operation like, okay, um, do a uh, BRSH uh, create of this virtual machine or, or stop this virtual machine. So if you see the code, it's, um, it's really easy to hack and to create new ones. Um, 
the um, communication is through um, ASCII pipes, so you can use basically any language. Um, most of the of the drivers are developed in, in shell script, but there's also uh, a small Ruby programs for more complex operations and also some Python as well. Um, and one of the of the nice bits is that uh, different drivers can coexist in the same environment. So you can have um, at the same uh, drivers for uh, KVM and drivers for VMware, and they will have the same Open Nebula instance managing. Uh, two different kind of clusters with different um, virtualization technology. So, um, as it says there, they are really easy to adapt, to maintain as well, and it's really easy to create new ones. So this is an example of um, a script made in Ruby that uses the, the Open Nebula Cloud API. So. This uh, script will shut down all the virtual machines that I have access to. So the first thing will be to, um, to require the Open Nebula library. And then you have to create a client to talk with Open Nebula, which will basically uh, will need the credentials and the, the endpoint of where Open Nebula is running. This is the port, the default port for the XML RPC API. So once you have uh, the client created, you can ask uh, for the pool of virtual machines that I have access to. So this will give you a data structure with, uh, with all your virtual machines. So then you can just loop through each other and do uh, all the operations that OpenNable is capable of. In this case, shutting down. And you can check if the machine has been shut down correctly or not. So this is... Um, a simple task that can be automated uh, using using a shared script. And well, if you are into into programming, if you are and also see admin, I I'm sure you will appreciate this kind of stuff. Okay, so um, uh, some information on who is using Open Nebula. Um, uh, there's a lot of reference customers that uh, ranges from supercomputing centers like uh, Fermilab or, or the European Space Agency uh, to banking um, entities like, for instance, the Santander and also uh, to big telcos like uh, RIM, which now it's called BlackBerry. Uh, this is a really good reference use case because they use um, Open Nebula in in all of the data centers around the world to give uh, BlackBerry services. Um, it's also used by uh, companies as big as China Mobile. They have a kind of a clone like of the Amazon EC2 uh, cloud, and it's run by Open Nebula as well. Well, some data on the kind of uh, users that uh, use Open Nebula. This is a survey, but I don't think you can read it very well. You know, the information is in the web page if you are interested. Okay, so um, if you want to try out Open Nebula, I suggest that you start with uh, one of the sandboxes because installing it from scratch uh, is, is not difficult, but um, uh, the amount of work you have to do to configure it uh, makes it um, advisable to use one of the pre-configured uh, sandboxes. So if you want to try it out in just no time, you can download one of these um, sandboxes. That there's one for VirtualBox if you want to try in the desktop. There's another one for VMware ESX, and also for, for KVM. If you go to opennebula.org, uh, you'll see one of the tabs in the top is the Try Out tab. You go there and you can download it and, and at least uh, get a feeling of, of what Open Nebula does. If you want to get involved in the community, please do so. There's lots of things that uh, people can do. Uh, the most important one, I think, is to, is to use the software and give us feedback on what things are we doing wrong and what we can we improve. There's lots of mechanisms to do so, like the development portal where you can file bugs, the mailing list that, can be, that is used to give uh, support by the community. Um, you can also help us translate Open Nebula to your favorite language. Um, 
lots of uh, possibilities here. The community is, is quite active. We have lots of contributors. Uh, the Sandstone has been translated to 17 languages, and there's uh, companies uh, contributing to the ecosystem. Uh, we also have an IRC channel where developers used to hang around in case someone has any problem. Just write it there and we'll answer it if we are available. Um, just a bit of data on C12E. So C12E is the company behind the Open Nebula project. Um, it has have a lot of expertise on, on cloud deployments. We've been working almost six years in the field. Uh, we have a service and partner program. Um, so uh, we can help our partners to create customized cloud services and products. Um, we work on a subscription model, so no from investment is, is required, just a small fee to support your, your cloud deployment is needed. And uh, the support is straight from the developers of the, of the software. Um, uh, one of the, um, of the important bits of, uh, of having this in mind is that uh, the software is, is, is mature. I mean, it's proving with massive deployments, so at least I think it's deserved to give it a try. And this is just a um, thank you slide for bringing me here, NetWays. <laughs> I just want to announce that they are our first premium partner, so I think we'll make a good team to offer services and consulting on Open Nebula based uh, clouds. So thanks for having me today. And that'll be it. Uh, do you have any questions? It's not time. So, any questions, anyone? I was always wondering about this uh, virtual kind of solutions. Is how you uh, put the upper limit, for instance, on the cluster of the machines. I'm talking about real cluster, the HPC, some solution with the thousands of compute nodes connected. And for instance, you want to make the share and one customer would be able to use 100 nodes connected to the same storage system, another, another 100 nodes, and then how you put the limits on how those customers will use the infinite band, for instance, and then the storage in terms of IOPS. Mm -hmm. So I guess you were talking about the quotas that the users have. It's not really the quotas. This is kind of upper limits. I mean, is uh, when they, you put the quota on the storage, you just put the up to some uh, storage capacity. But mm -hmm. here I'm talking about IOPS so that one customer can generate real lots of traffic and uh, get in stuck the whole system while the other customers will be just waiting for the response from that storage system. So I see. Um, so what you mean is, um, how do we um, make sure that a customer is not clogging the system by making a thousand requests, for instance, to create VMs? Yeah. So well, uh, we don't have a specific solution for that, but we we work with uh, with quotas. So you can, in a way, you can um, design your cloud. So. Uh, if one user is uh, clogging up one cl certain cluster, the other users will use another one. If this user clogs one cluster, um, it is true that the other users that are using virtual machine from that cluster will suffer from that. Um, Network-wise, there's no a clear solution. In terms of uh, uh, the computing resources, um, yes, because uh, if you don't do over-committing, for instance, um, virtual machines that are running in one host cannot use more than the CPU that is allowed to use. But it's true that network-wise, you can get into trouble if one user starts a thousand VMs in the same cluster at the same time. That's something that uh, can be worked upon, and it's, no, it's not really there. Any other questions? So, um, well then, 
Thank you, uh, Tino, uh, Tino for, the, uh, for the presentation of Open Nebula. Thank you for having me.